Hello! This is Shoyan, a Japanese carpenter. This time, I'd like to enjoy doing DIY while taking it seriously at the same time. This wood was a tree that said, this tree, what kind of tree? Interesting tree. The official name is Monkey Pod. I'd like to make a table with this material. And about the table leg, here. This material is the Okova. I imagine that I could divide this in half and make two legs on each side. But honestly, I don't know the final output look. Well, I'll do it. First, cut the timber roughly as usual. This board is very dry, but it's dry enough. There's a rot at the treetop, and the stump side is cracked about 10 centimeters. Even if I remove this, 2300 millimeters will be left. The total length is about 2600 to 2700 millimeters. So I'd like to remove those parts and process it. Next, cut to both ends. This wood is quite unmanageable, but I didn't know about it until I tried to cut it with a circular saw. The circular saw gets caught and doesn't move forward. If I try to cut it with a circular saw, I have no choice but to cut two rows in parallel. It's troublesome to cut with a circular saw, so I decided to cut it with a chainsaw. With a chainsaw, I can easily cut it off no matter how unmanageable it is. The dimension of the board is 90 cm from the narrow side and 140 cm from the wide root side. The thickness is 70 mm. Now, I'll put my energy in making the board. First, check the twist on both ends. Put on the straight timbers in parallel and check the twist of the timber. Many old carpenters did this to fix the twist. Plane the higher side with an electric plane. I don't think anyone can finish such a board with an electric plane. But well, I'll do my best. Monkey Pod, it's a Hitachi's commercial tree. It's a fat big tree that grows in warm places in Central and South America. Annual rings of the tree can't be counted reliably. It's not solid, but it's quite heavy. And the hardness is as hard as the Okova. Well, the heather will likely to appear beautifully. After fixing the warps at both ends, check the warp at the center. If I fix the warp at the center, it means I have divided this board into two pieces. Also, this board is warped in the long direction in the middle. If I plane it in the middle, I can find the lowest part of this surface. Since the warps in three places have been fixed, plane it so that it would all be plane straight from the outer to the center. Originally, the wider side was thicker, so I'll adjust the warp of the entire board on this side. I'll use a groove cutter in deciding the depths to be planed. If I'll use an electric plane only, the planing condition will not be constant. If it will not become constant, warps will occur again. And in the same way, make it plain from the outer. Plain inward. There are some places that I haven't planed by electric plane yet, but I'll plane it by hand planer. Actually, I was planning to use an electric plane only and finish it with sander. 
but with ordinary double-edged electric plane, the tear-out of this board is hard to rid off. It'll occur more than Zalkova. There's no problem with the position of Hazard, but the part between the straight grain and the Hazard will result in a tear-out. That's why I decided to plane it with a hand plane. Even if it's a hand plane, it's hard to plane just as much as Zalkova. No matter which direction to go, a tear-out will occur. I'm getting sad. Plane it as much as possible by hand plane. And at the end, I'd like to finish with a fine sander. Finally, the surface is finished. Next, plane the back side. Now I can draw markings to make the thickness uniform. Chamfer with the hand plane is marked and measures the thickness dimensions. Based on the surface, I'll plane it with electric plane. At first, it was a little over than 70 millimeters, but when it was finished, only 58 millimeters was left. The backside is relatively easy. No need to check for warps. Determine the thickness first, and the center is bogging, so it's easy to plane. When I want to greatly reduce the thickness of a whiteboard, it's faster to cut it sideways. The wood shavings will be long, and my body won't move that much. Finally, if I plane it vertically, it'll be beautifully finished. Since both sides have been planed, I'll decide the lengths here. I can measure the position of the center of both widths and measure a right angle to decide. But if it's large like this, it's better to apply a square board as a guide and measure the dimensions based on it so that I can check the balance and measure it easy. And the final cut, I'll insert the saw. As you can see, the circular saw doesn't go straight. In such a case, shift it by about 1 cm and cut two at the same time. Then it won't get caught. Use the electric plane to finish the end surface. If it's an end surface, relatively any material can be planed beautifully by electric plane. And about the side of the table, I'd like to finish it with ads. I haven't used it for a long time, so it can't cut well. I'll sharpen it first. Woo. Now I'll begin. It's been a long time since I used the ads. In the old days, I used to cut out logs with the ads. The reason why I decided to finish the side with an ad this time is, normally the side of the table will be beautifully rounded with a sander to fit it. But since the log is lumbered and made into a board, I just wondered if even only the side part would be an old-fashioned ad's finish. This sapwood looks alive, but actually, it's dead. The wood is not solid. 
it's a sap side that looks like a hardened cork, so it won't tear out and just chip. It's difficult. It looks like I'm poking, but I managed to finish it. At finish after a long time. That should do. Next, use the sander. First, sand it from the back side. I'll sand it with a rough 120 grit sandpaper. This is the back side, so I'd like to finish it with only this 120 grit sandpaper. Chamfer the side part widely. Since the hardwood side is sharp, if I don't chamfer widely, the feet will hit when using a table. So I'll chamfer widely. Also, sand the end surface. This material is hard, so the end surface will finish beautifully. And finish it with 320 grit sandpaper. Lightly sand the side so as not to remove the traces of the ants. For the final finish, touch it rely on the feeling of my hands and finish it with sandpaper. Finally, finish the top surface. I intended to plane it by hand plane, but there are still a few tear out. I will fix it by sander. I made it glossy with a hand plane, so I can't sander it well. On the contrary, it may have been possible to finish it faster by finishing it with sander from the beginning. The price of the monkey pond material that I used this time was about 150,000 yen at a lumber shop. It's quite expensive. I think it's a little cheaper than Zelkova. However, it's hard to find a Zelkova with such a large size. Monkey pod, it's worth it when it finished. Now, I managed to make it into a table shape. It took 10 hours since I started working. I made it using only electric plane. If I order this to a processing shop, it will cost about 25,000 to 30,000 yen just by planing. Considering that it'll be further refined from the process, if I'll do it myself, the work pays it off. But when I tried it, I realized that it was a difficult job. It's a task that I don't want to do right away, even if I'm told to do it again. This time, I made a table board. And the next time, I'll divide the Zelkova material in half and make table legs. And I'd also like to try painting. I appreciate if you watch it. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.